Every investor's biggest fear is losing money on their investments. When this happens, we all have a strong emotional desire to sell out of the market and put a stopper on further losses. This is what everybody does and is the reason why markets can go into continued freefall weeks after the initial losses have been announced because people start to panic sell. In this video, we talk about our own losses, what we did right, what we did wrong, and how the type of investment can affect whether we sell or hold. Let's check it out. Welcome to Money and Shackled, the investment channel that sets you and your finances free. I'm Andy, this is Ben, and if you like what we say, hit the like button and click subscribe. Let's get into it. Losing out, an emotional roller coaster. When I was 16, I inherited a couple of thousand pounds from a relative, and on the advice of those around me, I visited a bank's uh, financial advisor who advised me to put it into a long-term investment fund of some kind, and with his help and guidance, I chose to put it into a commercial property investment fund. Soon after, the recession hit and everybody's portfolios took a beating, especially those that were invested in commercial property as confidence in the property market plummeted. The value of my investment was slashed and I panicked. I sold out of the fund and crystallised my losses out of fear of losing more. For a novice investor, it's easy to make a bad investment decision based on emotion rather than knowledge and logic, just like the majority of casual investors do. Long term horizon. Now that we are older and more experienced and immerse ourselves into the world of investing, we know to invest for the long term and not to worry about short term price fluctuations. This is in part due to the classes of assets at the heart of our portfolios. A well-balanced portfolio is made up of core and satellite assets. Our core assets are in either investments that we never intend to sell such as property or in highly differentiated market tracking index funds that are considered so diversified that they cannot fail. Core assets. Property. At the core of my portfolio is investment property. Not the commercial property funds that I dabbled in as a teenager, but actual bricks and mortar properties that I own and rent out. I invest in these for cash flows from the rent to support me in my retirement. As such, I do not care if the market price of the house goes down, as I am holding on to these and do not intend to sell. Core Assets Index Tracker Funds The core of my portfolio is in index tracking funds such as ETFs, which track the, the rises and the falls of the stock market. I receive dividends which provides me with cash flow, but a secondary consideration for wealth gain is to sell the uh, investments when the uh, prices are high to realise those profits. The flexibility of investing and selling funds is such that selling will always be an option on the table and the temptation will always be there when markets are falling to crystallise your losses with a simple click of a button. However, because index funds can track a market, and in some cases the whole world market, they are never going to be completely worthless. In fact, history has shown us that when the prices fall, they often recover within just a few years. So we are not overly concerned when our index trackers fall in value because we are in it for the long term. Crystallising losses. A point to mention here is that you haven't truly lost anything until the day that you sell. Some people we know check the markets almost daily because they are worried when it goes down on the effect it is having on their pension fund, which doesn't even mature in some cases for another 30 years. The only market price that matters is the price on the day that you sell. If you're seeing falling prices, in truth, this is a good thing because you can buy more at very favourable prices and selling should be the last thing on your mind. What about shares? Individual shares are an entirely different matter. They are not at all diversified, they are a single trade and the share price can fall, in theory, for the last time ever. It can fall all the way down to nil. In this scenario, you would have been better to realise your losses when the price started to dip but how can you be sure that it won't recover? You can't. You can only take a best guess based on your knowledge of a company. And this is why we always say to invest in, in, in individual stocks as part of a core and satellite approach and only invest in companies that you understand. 
If you are going to invest in shares, then make sure that you have an adequately diversified portfolio of between 20 and 30 different shareholdings. In this way, any losses that you, work, that you make won't be felt so keenly. Other asset classes. Other popular asset classes include peer-to-peer -peer lending and cryptocurrencies. Cryptocurrencies such as Bitcoin are so temperamental that a fall in the market price could indicate a total collapse of the currency. So, this might be one asset class where nobody would blame you for realising your losses early. Losses in peer-to-peer -peer lending are realised in real time, as defaults happen on your loans which have to be written off. And yet, debt defaults are part and parcel of lending money. These peer-to-peer -peer platforms have shown, at least in a relatively short amount of time, that their money earned on the interest exceeds the amount lost to capital defaults. We, at least, would rather keep the money invested for future possible returns than withdraw the money due to bad debts. Question of the day, have you lost money investing? And how did you manage that emotion? Let us know below in the comments section. Thanks for watching. On this channel, we'll talk a lot about personal finance, investing, and all things money. And if you want to see more great content, please click the subscribe button below. This is Money Unshackled. See you next time.